and the current lecture you will study the boundary conditions relevant to the separation between two different dielectric media it's well known to you in a single medium the electric field is continuous however at the boundary between two different media the electric field may change abruptly in both magnitude and uh, direction it is now appropriate to ask what's the meaning of the term boundary condition to answer this question please go through this paragraph poisson's and laplace's equations should satisfy certain conditions at the boundaries between different media the conditions pertaining to potential tangential component of electric field normal component of displacement vector and uh, reflection lines of forces are called boundary conditions now we are in the position to study the boundary conditions on d the displacement vector and e the electric field at a boundary between two dielectrics generally we can identify four specific conditions two that apply to the normal and the tangential components of the displacement vector and two that pertain to the normal and the tangential components of the electric field see this condition the normal component of the displacement vector is continuous across the charge free boundary between two dielectrics d1n is equal to d2n here d1n stands for normal component of the displacement vector in the medium one d2n stands for normal component of the displacement vector in the medium two see this boundary condition the normal component of electric field is discontinuous across the charge free boundary between two dielectrics e1n not equal to e2n see the next boundary condition the tangential component of electric field is continuous across the charge free boundary between two dielectrics e1t equal to e2t the last boundary condition is the tangential component of displacement vector is discontinuous across the charge free boundary between two dielectrics d1t not equal to d2t now we have to prove this boundary condition normal component of displacement vector is continuous at a boundary between two dielectrics d1n is equal to d2n for that consider a boundary separating two dielectric media is so medium 1 medium 2 medium 1 has a permittivity of epsilon 1 whereas medium 2 has a permittivity of epsilon 2 to get the boundary condition for displacement vector d construct a pill box covering both dielectric media let d1n be the displacement vector normal to the top of the box in medium 1 and d2n the displacement vector normal to the bottom of the box in medium 2 here d1n is a outward normal hence its sign is positive whereas d2n is a inward normal whose sign is negative according to gauss theorem the total electric flux linked with the closed network is 1 by epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed by it mathematically we can write integral e dot ds equal to q divided by epsilon naught if you cross multiply we can get epsilon naught e dot ds equal to q we know that epsilon naught in d is our displacement vector d therefore the above integral is changed as integral d dot ds equal to q to proceed further 
we have to utilize this pill box from the figure the total flux over the box is entirely due to flux over the top and the bottom surfaces here the contribution to d dot ds from the top of the box is d1n dot ds if you consider the bottom of the box we have to put minus d2n dot delta s here d2n is the inward drawn normal whose sign is negative so the left hand side of this equation is d1n dot delta s minus d2n dot delta s which is equal to instead of q we have to put rho suffix s dot delta s here rho suffix s is a surface charge density if it is multiplied by delta s that is our q but in the case of uh, dielectric dielectric that means a boundary is separating two dielectric media there is no surface charge density so the value of rho s in the present case is zero this equation is modified in this form here the value of delta s not equal to zero then d1n minus d2n is equal to zero therefore d1n is equal to d2n hence we have proved the normal component of displacement vector is continuous see this condition we have to prove the tangential component of electric field is continuous across the boundary between two dielectrics in order to prove this condition construct a rectangular box by covering both the media we have constructed a rectangular box of length delta x and height 2 into delta y here e1t is the tangential component of uh, electric field in the first media e2t stands for the tangential component of electric field in the second medium the boundary condition on the tangential component of the electric field follows from the conservation of electrostatic field according to the conservation theorem of the electrostatic field no work is done in taking a unit test charge around a closed path see here no work is done to carry a charge from the point a to b b to c c to d and d to a in order to complete this rectangle no work is needed the line integral of e around the rectangle a b c d a is e1 t delta x minus e2 t delta x equal to 0 because the tangential component is from left to right from a to b the tangential component is e1 t into delta x that is the value of e dot dl is e1 t into delta x but contributions from these two vertical sides are zero then if you think about c to d direction which is opposite to the tangential component of electric field so you have to put a negative sign here minus of e to t into delta x equal to 0 e1 t minus e2 t entire is multiplied by delta x equal to 0 here delta x not equal to 0 therefore e1 t minus e2 t equal to 0 from this we may write e1t equal to e2t the above relation shows that the tangential components of the electric field are the same on both sides of a boundary between two dielectrics now we'll talk about the tangential component of uh, displacement vector is discontinuous even though the tangential component of the electric field is continuous on both sides of the boundary between two dielectrics the tangential component of the displacement vector is discontinuous you know that d equal to epsilon e here d1t equal to epsilon 1 into e1t 
and d to t equal to epsilon 2 into e to t. From this e1 t equal to d1 t by epsilon 1 and e2 t equal to d2 t by epsilon 2. From the condition of e1 t equal d2 t, we can write d1 t by epsilon 1 equal to d2 t by epsilon 2. Then we may write d1 t by d2 t equal to epsilon 1 by epsilon 2. Here the value of epsilon 1 is different from the value of epsilon 2. Therefore, d1 t not equal to d2 t. That is the tangential component of displacement vector is discontinuous. Now we have to replace the second dielectric medium with the help of a conductor. From this relation d1 n dot delta s minus d2 n dot delta s equal to rho s into delta s. We may write d2 n is equal to 0. For a conducting medium, the normal component of displacement vector is equal to 0. But here the medium 2 is conducting, we may expect the surface charges. Rho suffix s is having some value, which is not equal to 0. Then we can write d1 n equal to rho s. The normal component of D across a dielectric conductor boundary. The normal component of displacement vector at a dielectric conductor boundary is equal to the surface charge on the conductor. That means already we have proved that D1n equal to rho suffix S. It follows that E1n that is normal component of electric field which is equal to rho s by epsilon 1. And finally, we have to study the tangential component of E across a dielectric conductor boundary. Since the tangential component of the electric field is 0 along a perfect conducting surface, the value of E to t is 0. Therefore, the tangential component of the electric field at a dielectric conductor boundary is equal to 0, E1t equal to 0.